Welcome to Bullets and Beer. I'm River Fox, and I chose Manjaren Walther PP. Go with the Cronenberg 1664 beer. A German gun with a French beer? Well, guess what? This gun was made in France. You guys are about to see some shooting. First, let's get into the history of the gun. Let's check some of that stuff out, and then we can get back to the range. The destruction already entails, and get the show on the road. Today we have the Walter PP and the Cronenberg 1664. Uh, the Walter PP is a single double action blowback operated semi-automatic pistol. It is sleek and slender. Beautiful gun. It was patented originally in 1929 by Fritz Walter at the Karl Walter Gesellschaft mit Beschranter Haftung. This is a German gun. Now, oh, and many of you may be familiar with it with James Bond and his PPK, which was the shorter variant developed in 1931. Walter PPK. 7.65 mil with a delivery like a brick through a plate glass window. Takes a brush silencer with very little reduction in muzzle velocity. This is Cronenberg 1664. This is a French beer brewed in Alsace. And uh, what the heck is a French beer doing with a German gun? I figured that I'll take this gun and this beer because they're both German traditions taken into French hand. This gun in particular is one of the copies of the Walter PP, and the Walter PP was perhaps the most copied pistol or semi-automatic pistol in the entire world. So this gun in particular was produced in 1956, and this was made in France, actually in the same region that this beer comes from, in Alsace. So we will get into the history of why it was made in France and how it got there, but first, let's check out this beer. And I'll give it a little pour, so I can even try to pour slowly here but it just produces such a big head and i think that is only matched by the head of french generals after the first world war so this is a a straw beer it is lighter in color it is straw let's give it a taste all right so when you first get into a Cronenberg, just like the Stiegel that I did a video of a couple weeks ago, which if you haven't seen it already, go check that out. It hits you with a, a little bit of a malty flavor. Uh, compared to the Stiegel, which the Stiegel delivers a, a punch of maltiness, this is more like a, a slap, a slap. It's there, but it doesn't really go much farther than the initial flavor. Mid-taste range and then the aftertaste drops off and let me check this out again. And you do get a little bit of a tang to it. Almost like just licked a nail, uh, a little almost metallicness. If I am to believe Cronenberg's marketing, that comes from the Strissel Spalt variety of hops. And this is an Alsatian hop that's part of the Zatzformen, the varieties of hops that are more closely related to this Czech Zatz hop or, or Zatetz. This hop family is a very aromatic family, uh, almost spicy, as uh, this guy, Stephen Snyder, in the Brewmasters Bible uh, describes it. But you'll, you'll find these hops in all of your Central European brews, your Pilsners. If you got a German German lager, it's probably something with a Spalter or a Zatz hop selection. We can kind of feel that in this 1664, but and perhaps thankfully, it doesn't give that hoppiness of a Pilsner, and it doesn't go much farther with its malt than, say, the Stiegel, so it, it really is a neutral beer. And that's perhaps fitting to the region that it comes from, because it comes from Alsace, which was a neutral, well, a highly fought over piece of land between France and Germany. And I think if we're going to understand this beer or this gun, we have to know the context of this place. Strasbourg. Uh, all of the Middle Ages, it's under the Holy Roman Empire. And contrary to how its name sounds, it was a German Empire. So Strasbourg itself, up until 1681, is operating in the authority of the Holy Roman Empire. But 1681 happened, and it's the French have surrounded the place and just pounced on it. Just like 30 years prior, there was a 30 years war. And that just kind of wiped out any militancy in, in Europe that, uh, that wasn't French or Swedish. So. The French win a lot of land at the Peace of Westphalia, then they move into Strasbourg. A few years later, they don't get Strasbourg, it's still a free imperial city, but then they kind of, you know, do some conniving and, oh, my army's bigger than yours, so I'm going to march in and take it. But this brewery, the predecessor of Cronenberg, was started in 1664, that is before it became a French city. 
kind of a German tradition that, that keeps going on. They had to change their name a few times in its history, and, and every time it changed its name, it was in relation to a well, new occupation or the new management. The Germans came back in 1870, but then they won the war that, that had them there in 1871, and then it became a German territory again. After World War I, the French took it back over, and Cronenberg changes its name with the French take back over to Tigre Bois, Brasserie Tigre, so it's like a, the Tiger Brewery. World War II happens, Germans are there. Soon after, Cronenberg is like bought by some international conglomerates. Uh, it changes its name to Cronenberg after World War II, and in 1952, they begin 1664, trying to make it seem like they have a, a deep history with the, the region in Alsace. In Alsace, things are a little bit different. The hop farmers are treated like the footballers of Britain. They are idolized and adored. And why not? And we get to this gun. So, when disassembling the Volta, after checking that it's safe, you remove the magazine. There's a nice little takedown lever. Kind of pull it back. And you can pull out the slide. And you have this nice little spring here. This is a blowback operated pistol. I mean, straight blowback, really simple. With every bullet that's fired, the slide, it recoils back and it's stopped by this spring and then it loads another one. Classic pistol design. And I put it back and just do the whole process again. And uh, yeah, pretty nifty. The Walter Company, Karl Walter Gesellschaft mit beschränkter Haftung, uh, was founded in 1886 in Turing, Germany, or Thuringia. This is a place that became East Germany. 1886, Karl Walter starts it. He has five sons. Three of his sons go into gunsmithing, and his oldest son, Fritz, becomes the owner of Walter later on. And while Fritz is an apprentice, he studies at DWM, or Deutsche Waffen und Munitionsfabriken. It's the big money of the gun world at the time. Germany. All of the firearms development that, that's really happening is happening there. You see semi-automatic pistols really start to take off there. Um, you see Borchardt with his uh, weird C93 pistol. If you ever play uh, Red Dead Redemption, which I'm sure you do, you see a, a semi-automatic pistol. 1908, Georg Luger perfects that and makes the Luger POA. And Fritz Walter is there and he's studying these and he's like, Hey daddy, we need some of these semi-automatic pistols. So can we make some? And it's like, yeah, go for it, man. It's your company now. So they start a line of pistols semi-automatic pistols, starting from the Model 1 to the Model 9, and the Model 1 had a patent in 1911. A funky gun, but it took nine models for them to realize what exactly a semi-automatic pistol needed. It needed a complex safety feature, as well as a single double action mechanism, which wasn't something that you saw in semi-automatic pistols at the time. So what do I mean by all of this? So he designs this, this Model PP, 1929, the PBK, 1931. The German military loves this. They see service in the Luftwaffe, in Panzertruppen, and its name, Polizei hints that it's all police service, and it most certainly did. This firearm in particular has a Bayerische Polizei marking that has been cancelled out, which means that this was a Bavarian police pistol, which is pretty cool. So World War II happens, and the Germans lose. So Fritz Walter realizes that the Soviets are hanging out around him. Uh, they have occupied touring, and he doesn't want to be around when, when they start getting into what they're about to get into. He takes a briefcase full of 80 patents that he has overseen in his time as the, uh, the president there and he hops the border into Western and he starts a workshop in Ulm and that's where he produces any non-military good that he can to make money. Well, what do you do when you have all these firearms patents and you can't necessarily produce them? You go to the winner and you ask if they want some guns. And so Manurin in Alsace in France was like, hey man, can we buy a, a license from you for Walter, for your, for your PP? And, and he's like, oh, hell yeah. So in 1952, the French start producing the Walter PP, and they do it pretty darn well. Not only is it still sleek and slender and function just as well, but it's also cheap for the Germans to have their guns produced in France. So even when they can reproduce, <laughs> they can produce guns again in Germany, 1955, they don't produce their, their Walter PPs. And you do see uh, Walter's uh, marked made in Germany after 1955, but all the machining was being done in France, and they just did the proof test. A German law had it where wherever the firearm is proof fired is where it must be marketed as being produced in. So basically, 1952 to 1986, all of your Walter PPs and PPKs are produced in France and made by Manuel. So how about a quick review? 1929, Fritz Walter whips out his PP. 1931, his PP gets smaller with the PPK. By the end of World War II, hundreds of thousands of German soldiers and police officers have handled his PP. His PP was so popular that it was copied by the Russians, the Czechs, the Turks, and evidently, the French, a little bit more intimately. This gun 
and this beer are both German traditions taken on in French hands. Aside from sharing a birth year, 1952, when 1664 came out and when this pistol began to be produced in Manuel, they also share the birthplace of being in Alsace. And I think these being commercial endeavors, when taken together, they resemble the complicated history of the region as well as the prosperous future that it holds. Kronenberg now, you can, you can find it worldwide. You can get this easily in Kentucky, where I'm at. And then this gun, it saw service and was implemented to kill the French. And then the French go and produce it and produce it for peacekeepers in Germany. So the French are profiting off of it, Walter is profiting off of it, and the mean streets of rural Bavaria are being kept safe. Well, <laughs> I like beer and I like guns. I've said that before. And again, I'm just doing this to have fun. If you enjoy something like this, please go check out my Stiegel Steyr video. I also have near and dear gun and beer selection there. I don't have any personal connection to 1664 other than I've, I've had it before. <laughs> I'm not going to go out on the range tonight, but you're about to see me out on the range when I've safely metabolized the alcohol in these beers. And by all means, cheers. We're down here at the range with the Walter PP or the Manuel Run PP. And we're going to see if it really can deliver the stopping power of a brick through a plate glass window. 7.65 mil with a delivery like a brick through a plate glass window. And then maybe we'll shoot some beer after that. All right, so today we are using some Gecko, which is made in Hungary. Full metal jacket ammo, 32 ACP. Let's, uh, let's get this. <laughs> wow, that was just one shot. It's probably better than a brick. Holy crap, that destroyed that glass. That's awesome. Now we've got full mag of Hornady Critical Defense 32 ACP. Let's see if I can hit anything at this distance. I'm gonna try the, the double action pull first. Okay, let's get my stance. Alright, so you just saw some really bad shooting. I am not a marksman, I am a scholar, as you can say. Well, anyway, we see that, yeah, it does a lot more damage than a, a brick through a plate glass window. 7.65 mil with a delivery like a brick through a plate glass window. Well, when it hits a beer can, it, it knocks that one over too. I hope that you've enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe and share it. Now, if you haven't seen the Stiegel Steyr video that I did as my first video, please go check that one out. And also, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for their support on my first video. A few people really reached out, and uh, even the, the person that inspired me to start a YouTube channel, one of my buddies from high school, Leaf, has his own YouTube channel, Northern Kentucky Sports Bike. So if you like seeing uh, pretty dangerous stunts on state highways that may or may not be illegal, then go check that stuff out. Now, I chose the, the Manuren Walter PP to go with the Cronenberg 1664 beer because when you take the two together, aside from being made in the same year, 1952, in the same place, Alsace, it showcases the complicated history of the place, Cronenberg having to change its identity several times because of the changing of identity of Alsace, and uh, the Walter PP going from a gun designed to harm the French to a gun made by the French for the, you could say, mutual good of the people of Germany. And I guess after that, Europe. Uh, this is a police weapon and is continuing to see service in other police forces. You take a, a look at the complicated past and a hopeful future. So thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe. And remember, shoot, I was gonna come up with something to say. Uh, damn, pretty thirsty. Got a beer? Okay, well, we can work on that one, whatever.